Welcome to the uh, Page Walker Arts and History Center. I'm uh, Chris Carmichael. I have the pleasure of serving as the supervisor here at the Page Walker for the town of Cary. And I am delighted to have the gallery full of so many folks this evening. And uh, history fans. Now, I think there might be some uh, <clears throat> writing, uh, I mean, some readers here too tonight uh, as well. Um, but um, I'm going to uh, introduce a very dear friend of mine, Pat Fish, who is with the Friends of Page Walker. The Friends of Page Walker have been doing these preservation programs for a number of years now. And um, so Pat's going to tell you how we managed to set, snag such a wonderful a speaker this evening. So, Pat. Snag <laughs> Sorry, you can't sit with your husband tonight. Thank you all. I'm glad to have you here. Um, Excuse me. And welcome to the Friends Preservation Committee's seven presentation of Mysteries and Secrets Exploring the Perry Area Cemeteries. We prepare these programs first by determining which cemeteries we want to talk about here. And this time we started out with choosing two cemeteries, historic cemeteries, in the Umstead Park. And the, uh, one of these is the Warren Haley Cemetery and the other was the Page Cemetery. And we chose those because we knew there were some connections with the town of Cary. We started our research with the Warren Haley Cemetery. We were fortunate to have access to the book, Stories and Stones, um, Memories from Bygone Farming Community in North Carolina. This is a beautiful book about the history of the families that lived in Umstead before it became a park. Um, and I want to thank David Humphreys, who's a member of the Umstead Consortium, who was nice enough to recommend this book for our use. So, first thing, one of the first things we do is we go visit the cemetery where we're interested in, in uh, presenting. So, um, armed with a diagram of the cemetery found in the book, and a cemeterycensus.com detailed listing for the gravesites. We made our first visit to the cemetery. Uh, we took notes. We always take notes. We have diagrams. We uh, talk, uh, write uh, notes about the details of the site, names and dates, special descriptions, locations of the graves, and mysteries and secrets that were presented here. And then we use this information to put together for our presentation. Well, in this case, I had some questions about the cemetery. And um, the foreword in the book, Stories in Stone, was written by our guest. Uh, his family members lived in the park, some of which are buried in the Warren Haley Cemetery. So I thought, well, I was concerned about bothering him because this was at the same time that Hurricane Florence had been such a disaster in Washington and at UNC where um, the tradition teaches. But I thought, well, let me go ahead and email him with the questions. And I thought, well, you know, I might not receive an answer considering how things were in Wilmington. But oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. the very same day he responded. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was so nice. He answered all my questions. But then he told me how happy he was that we were interested in his family's history. Boy, that made me feel really good. <laughs> he even mentioned that he might attend the program. I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, literally, I said that. So, we agreed to talk the next day, and he said, yeah, he'd be coming, and he would be willing to contribute to the program. Well, I realized ever so quickly, it made a lot more sense for him to present the program. <laughs> and he generously agreed to be able to present it. Clyde is an author of 10 novels, a lot of you may already know this, including the Float Plane Notebooks, in which he used the ancestral, his family, um, Warren family home site and graveyard as a model for that novel. He has been a Guggenheim fellow, and five of his novels have been New York Times notable books. He was awarded the North Carolina Award for Literature in 1997, and is a member of the Fellowship of Southern Writers. And needless to say, here I <laughs> was talking to this man on the phone. <laughs> he is the Keenan S. He is a Thomas S. Keenan III Distinguished Professor of Creative Writing at UNCW. Now lucky for his students. He lives in Wilmington with his wife and children, and one of his daughters, Catherine, is with us today. And I am so honored and pleased to present Tyler. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't 
can't, I've never done a program without any notes, without a list of things to talk about, but when I tried to talk about this graveyard, I said I'm just going to take nothing. But let me just start and, and say how many people, uh, well let me say something about the phones first. I was playing, playing a bluegrass band, a bunch of old people, and we asked people to keep their phones on. If one of us died, you can <laughs> But how many people here tonight, I've already met some people, have relatives buried uh, in this graveyard, Warren Hayden graveyard? Raise your hand. One, two, three, uh oh, four, five. Who are you? I'm Betsy Beals and I'm. Betsy, you're Betty's daughter. I'm actually uh, Elizabeth Edgerton Broadwell. Okay. So your your grandmother was my grandmother's sister. Oh, and you, sir? Okay, what? Wrong radio. Anyway, now people who have relatives who grew up in this park area or who are buried somewhere, raise your hand. Okay, can can you tell? I know this is Joy and Gary Keen, and I heard Al Keen all my life. And here's Eddie, my cousin. <laughs> to be older. <laughs> You're older than I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Eddie and I, from age probably three or four, once a year, we've seen each other. This is the first time we've seen it at the graveyard cleaning. We still do that every year in the, in the spring. We go to this graveyard and clean it off. And Eddie and I used to hang out together here and run down to the creek. And, and but we've been doing it all our lives, once a year. And so I'm so glad Eddie, uh, Eddie and Pat are here. And excuse me, who's the next person from? And you are? My name is Grissom. Grissom? Oh my goodness, you're the, you're the meal person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be up here for maybe the next program. I'm, <laughs> but I'm so glad you're here. I, I, didn't you walk up one day when I was talking to someone and talk about, you knew Nora Warren? Yes. You, you went to her back door? Oh, I won't get to that story in a minute. <laughs> so, uh, I was born in 1944, and as long as I can remember, I've been going to this place once a year. And in the 50s, this was a road, this is the old Hillsborough Raleigh Road. This is a road that some of Sherman's soldiers came up, a headache to Durham. Um, to accept the surrender, and there was a there was a place here. This is when it belonged to not my. Uh, this is when it belonged to my great. No, this is when it belonged to my grandfather. Actually, my grandfather was born. In, no, my great grandfather. My grandfather was born in 1865. Believe it or not, my great grandfather in 1829, 26. He was alive when Thomas Jefferson was alive. We people had late family. I, I was born to my mother when she was 40, and so forth and so on. So I have only four generations back to 1826. Now. When the, when the northern people came through, the soldiers went in here and stole some meat. It was a driveway, it was a house right here, uh, and the graveyard is back here. We're going to have pictures in a minute. I have not prepared, as I said, I, I was sent a bunch of pictures, and when I started looking at those pictures, I said, I can talk about each picture, just put them up there, and I don't know what order they're coming up in, but this is the first one, and uh, Eddie will remember, uh, and anybody who, Eddie, I guess, and Catherine, and, and, and um, uh, Sharon, uh, the people who've gone to our graveyard cleanings, and uh, Mr. Grissom, you may have come to some of them, I'm not sure, but so we've got four of us here who go back, and this was a main highway, I mean, well, let me, let me go back to, the, let's go back to 1865, so the soldiers come in here and they steal some meat, and my grandmother saw it, uh, her great-grandmother saw it. Her name was Elizabeth Darby, Barbara Farabee, Caroline Jane Keith Warren. <laughs> her husband called her Puss. <laughs> and she saw, she was a midwife. Uh, her story, she, we'll get to her in a minute when we see her great. But she saw a soldier steal some meat from the smokehouse. Yeah. And they were sitting in a circle. And she put on a pot of boiling water. And she picked the one who stole the meat. And she took that boiling water out and poured it on it. Wow. And here's what she said. 
She said, I hope you burn in the belly of hell. Oh. And she went back inside. <laughs> and that's the kind of story that's been passed down to me and relatives, an enjoyment of quote and uh, quotes and language. And so many of you here in here, I can just feel and tell, have the same kind of background where, where language was important. You've inherited language. It's a treasure that you will die with. And, uh, you know, if somebody asked me, would I rather have a lot of wealth or family stories, I would say a lot of wealth. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm going to die with these family stories. And so I've been lucky enough, fortunate in many ways, to be able to transfer them into, uh, into fiction, into stories. And so now, in the 50s, you come in here, and this is a, a people driving by all the time. It's a, the, the park was wide open. And in the 30s, um, um, people were being born. Uh, Betty, one of, the, one of my cousins, uh, Eddie's sister was supposedly the last person born in the park. Is that right, Eddie? Mm -hmm. And just, if you come just up this way, it's a little way on the right, there's an old tree. You can still, still have a big hole in it. It was beside, uh, on two sides. You, stories in Stone, please read Stories in Stone. Get the, it's got all this, most of this in there. Some of it's not. Some of it's left out. I just told Catherine, my daughter, that Aunt Etta, who married an Etta, uh, married an Haley, was a, a law of man. And, and Catherine wanted to know what laudanum was. Laudanum was a mixture of opium and water. You know, you look like you're kind of mixed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not blaming you. Really. So, listen, this was a, a regular travel road. This was not here. This was all grown over. This is where the house used to be, which belonged to my great grandfather, and then later my great uncle, uh, Alfred. And the graveyard is back here. But what was amazing, starting in, I'm going to say the mid 70s into about mid 90s for 20 years, this was overgrown with wisteria. There, this was a tunnel. Wisteria came over these trees. And it was all through the trees, all everywhere. It would keep it back away from the graveyard. But this whole place was covered with wisteria. Did anybody get in there? Does anybody remember that? Being in there during that time? Yes. yes. So you were probably a hiker. Yep. yep. You can tell by that hat. <laughs> and, uh, so you you remember that then when the when the and so the park service came and cut it all out, which is okay. But uh, my mother remembered when the wisteria vine was planted by the back door uh, of the house here, and it, and it was completely wild and amazing. So here's another interesting thing about this. One day my aunt Oma was standing in this road, looking over here, and I said something to her, and she said, come here, I'm going to show you something. And we looked, she said, you see those, uh, you see that long, it's kind of like a long ditch? And I said, yeah. And, and, and you see that other, it's kind of another ditch on the other side. Now remember, this is Civil War Road. Old Hillsborough Raleigh Road was the name of it. She said, that's where the old road used to be. <laughs> <laughs> She said, that's where the plank road used to be. So she could see, you could vaguely see the outline of the old plank road that was there before this road, which was there during the Civil War. So those connections are, are, are just amazing. So let's go to the next picture. Uh, there's a rock, you can't quite see it right here, which was part of the, uh, um, part of the front stoop, I think, or the side stoop. Uh, uh, I can't remember that one. Now, okay, this is just, uh, let's go to the next one. This is out there. Next picture. Okay, this is a, the, a picture of the old house. Um, this is the picture of the tree I just told you about, which is down the road a little ways, with a big hole in it, which uh, was on each side of the, the, the Haley house. So the Haley's were, were, were very close by. And what happened, uh, next one please, is that uh, a Haley and a Warren got married. Okay, great. This is the graveyard. Uh, as you see it coming in. And again, back all back in here was uh, uh, Mysteria. And um, I want to say, uh, I had something planned for the radio. I was thinking that I said I never made planned, but I did. But, well, this chain was put up probably in, uh, I'm going to guess, about 1980. And my mother, who died in the late 1900s, would bring a little a can of silver paint 
in paint stain. We need the gray door paint. I should paint some of it and come back and paint the rest out of the layer. Uh, occasionally a tree would be down. Uh, there was a tree down when I was writing my novel. I was writing about in, in the novel, the graveyard is behind somebody's house. It's not in a park. But um, there's a tree down, and people are cutting it, cutting it up. And uh, so when when the graveyard cleaning happens, people are just all all in the graveyard. Uh, the Haley's have uh, these loud machines that they, they uh, <laughs> cut the grass with all the time. And the Warrens kind of like to use rakes to be quiet. We don't have any tension among us about that. <laughs> uh, the Warrens and the Haley's, um, um, while Warren, who is Eddie's granddaddy, married, while Haley married Etta Warren, who was my grandfather's sister. And they had, while Haley, help me Eddie, who had you and your brothers and sisters. A, a butcher. Your dad's name was Butcher. His name was Walter Clarence. Right. Walter Clarence. Was the wild was the granddad. Wild was the granddad. It's a great picture of him in uh, Stories in Stone with a, with a shotgun and a dog and a convertible, probably 19... 30, some kind of convertible. And um, so he married my uh, my great aunt, Etta. It was Israel and Aunt Etta and a bunch of them. Now, the main, we're going to go in close in on some of these little graves. Oh, I know what it was. So, about 1988, uh, you see we've got marked graves, but there are a lot of graves that are not marked in here. They're marked only with stones or they're just mounds, kind of. You can tell these, un it's always been about half of these graves unmarked. So one day, 1988, I'm standing there with my Aunt Oma. She's standing beside me. Aunt Oma and Aunt Lila, my mother, with three close sisters. I know you're not keeping up with the names, but I'm just wondering. But there were uh, Izzy, Israel's, um, Israel's uh, children. And Israel's mother was uh, Barbara, uh, Elizabeth Darby, Barbara Ferry, Kelly, <laughs> she was a midwife, and I, I, I can't wait to talk about her. But you know, when I was standing there, and I said, uh, gosh, wouldn't it be great if we could know who was buried in these unmarked graves? She said, go get a pencil and paper. <laughs> so I went and got a pencil and paper, and she said, that's where, and she made who it is. She said, this is where so-and-so's little baby's born, uh, un uh, baby's born. This is where so and so's cousins born. This is where, and she named them all. There are 26 of them. Wow. And I uh, wrote them all down and they ended up on the, uh, they used to be on the uh, bulletin board that you just saw. So this is, the, the, if I'm looking at it here, the road's back behind me. And to my left out here would be the home place, um, which they're in the book, they're diagrams of and photographs of. They've been pasted together from old photographs. Um, and then if we, if, if we were coming up the road, like we could see coming toward us a minute ago, graveyard's on the right, you go ahead and you get to the Haley uh, house up on, on the right. And if you turn and go the other way to the first intersection and turn left toward Ebenezer Church, you get to the King Place, correct? <laughs> now, uh, uh, gosh, I wish I had a picture of Al King. I knew, see, tell <laughs> the story. I'm going to get you stand up to make everything. So, so I absorbed so many stories from my mother and my aunts. I was so lucky because my mother um, had no more children besides me. And she was about 40 when I was born. She had a slightly older sister and a slightly younger sister. And they had no children. So it was as if I were raised by three grandmothers. And so I, I, I was able to, and, and they loved to talk about um, what I'm talking to you about. To each other, and you know, you know that the meaning of a family story is such that it can be repeated, and you can hear it over and over and over. But it's also kind of like that people's eyes can glaze over and say, "Your family." <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I'm worried about tonight. I don't want to know about your family. But uh, I want to bring, try to bring the people alive just a little bit and not go on too too long. So let's. Uh, this is, these are some of the Haley's I think we're kind of in here. There's the Uncle Albert's way in the back, and then the, the, the Warren people who uh, are, are, are right in here, they're, they're listed there. So I think we can, and the most recent, Rom, is buried right here. James, this is your next youngest brother. Next youngest brother. 
And he was buried here in 77. That was the last person buried. And uh, supposedly Betty, uh, was he the last person buried? I think he was. Uh, he might be. He was the last. That I was think he was. And so uh, I had an email from two cousins today. Uh, his nieces telling me that their mother was the last person born there, and that they understand that the graveyard is full. But I think there are a few places back there. I know Ross is determined to be buried there, a cousin. Uh, on the Haley side. So let's have the next photograph and start talking about some people. Because there's some fascinating people here. Okay, that's the one with the, uh, we, don't, we can't get a close up, but that's the list of all the names. That's another picture of the house. And that's a picture of Uncle Albert. I can't wait to tell you about Uncle Albert. This is a picture of my mother and her, her uh, two sisters. And uh, the problem is the Warren family. Notice it doesn't say the Warren Haley family. <laughs> <laughs> and notice also that I said that's a problem. <laughs> because uh, the, some of the Haley's are not happy about that, and I don't blame it. If it's in the Haley family or the Haley Cemetery, I'd be upset because it's more than the, the Warrens and Haley's, too. But we'll move on. We don't want to go get into all that. Here. Next, next one. <laughs> I'm not sure what's coming. Okay. So, Israel P. Dizzy. Uh, that's my, my grandfather, my mother's father. Uh, his father, William Pinckney Warren. Uh, worked as a millwright right after the pages built it in 1810. Soon after that, he was the millwright, William Pinckney. And Israel, I uh, had a bunch of brothers and sisters. His name was Izzy, one of the first family stories I ever heard. I don't know how big I was. My Uncle Bob, who you hear about in just a moment, my mother's brother, was talking about Izzy quail hunting on the, you know, in the, in the, in the park. Back then it was Cedar Fork Township. And uh, Mr. Cole or someone lived nearby, my Uncle Bob said, well, you know, uh, Izzy was quail hunting and shot a bird. He was on Mr. Cole's land. And Mr. Cole came over and saw him and stopped him and said, Izzy, where'd you shoot, where'd you shoot that bird? <laughs> and Izzy said, I shot him in the ass. I reckon he was flying from me. <laughs> 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 I said 1826. Anyone straighten me out on that? Mm -hmm. uh, so th th these are the oldest people uh, in the Warren family. Um, uh, then there's Israel and his mother. I'm taking a look at her. So she was a midwife, and uh, she um, rode side saddle on a horse and delivered babies. And behind the clock on the mantel in the old home place was a jar with, I think, alcohol holding what it was in the jar was that uh, Elizabeth, she was called Elizabeth, Elizabeth, my Uncle Bob said, he said she was called Elizabeth. She died in 1918. She lived for a long time. She had hair down to her. But she, having given birth to a baby with six fingers on each hand, cut off the fingers, extra fingers, and put them in that jar. Uh -huh. Put it behind the clock, and the kids would sneak in and get that jar and sit and look at it. <laughs> Just like kids with their cell phones now. <laughs> it, was, it was a whole different era, wasn't it? You can see it figure time over there. Anyway, I do, let me back up. I just looked at uh, what is it, Gary. So, through all of this, what I always heard was that Al King, Al King, was, do you know when he died, man, Chance Gary? I sir, around the top of head, I can't remember. He that. was a tribal elder. Yeah, he was a tribal elder, and his picture's on the front of Stories in Stone with, with the family. And when I walked in, I looked over. Gary, would you stand up? Yeah. Yes, sir. And I said, there's Al King. Reincarnated. Yeah. <laughs> just like him. Just it, like it, it's really good. Yeah. So thank you very much, Gary. Thank you, sir. So, uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, I got off the track a little bit. But here's what gets this. His mother hit me at her was a very serious woman. I know this because it's my mother's mother. So I heard about her in, in more serious ways.
he died in 1911, the time for it epidemic, when my mother was uh, seven. And um, six weeks later, her brother died, um, Luther. Um, see, April and June. Um, the whole community came and, 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 and uh, I did a whole bunch of farming for them. I told that over and over and over. Like when the barn burned down, the whole community would come. But the people came in. He was, he was uh, I think he, he was, uh, what was it, 19? He was 21. Uh, he left a child, a six month child, called, his name was Little Luther. And Little Luther, um, um, his wife, Little Luther's mother, somehow got talked into letting him be adopted. And my mother and her sisters went off and got him and brought him back and raised him. Basically. That's another long, involved, crazy, wild story. But Henrietta would not let her children cut cloth on Sundays. <laughs> that, was a def that was defined as work. That was the norm. But another thing that I have discovered was that this particular area, the Warrens were thought of, and I'm not sure about the Haley's, but maybe it was a little, it's a little bit wild, and they had some dancing and some music. Press King, one of your relatives. Yes. You know Press? Yes, sir. Did you know he was a musician? You probably did. I did. Yeah, I, I he was, was a banjo, a guitar, was a fiddle player, and he He could play several things out there. Yeah. So I remember from a kid. You know, going into my dad. So they would have Saturday night dances, and, uh, and, and, and some people were blackballed by the church. And the word that I heard, I can't remember where, was that it was, it was some of the warrants. It might have been from a George. There's some Georges in there too. I just remember being in there in the grave. This is off the subject. Look at standing out here with a woman named Nora George. I mean, a woman named uh, uh, Sylvia Wilkinson, who's my cousin. And her mother was standing there. My mother was standing here, and uh, and all of a sudden, my mother recognized and said, "Are you are you Lonnie or Lanny?" And she said, "I sure am." And it was one of those recognitions from decades, decades ago. And my mother kind of pulled me aside, and she said. They were all kind of fast. <laughs> but, so you had, these, you had these stories back and forth of who was what and who was how. And, uh, but uh, so this is where I'm going to bring you in, uh, Mr. Grissom. So now, George. Uncle Al, I don't want to get the Uncle Al with you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't let me, you, you throw something at me if I ain't going to get you in, but I'm going to hold it off. So look at, we've got an Anna. This is pretty incredible. You see, um, she lived a very short time. Um, and she's buried there. But there's another baby, and then we got the old man, uh, William P. I don't know too much about him, except he was in the old right, he ran the mill, and one of the keys of her many stories about, she was one with all the names. He called her puss. Now, um, Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is, a, for example, now this one might be Mark, but this, this is not Mark. Every year we come back, and, and every year we come back and do the rocks. This, this has to be cleaned later. But I came back one year after some bad rains and some bad storms, and the rocks were gone. Oh, my. And what I did was I couldn't believe that somebody had taken the, the rocks had buried. It, it sunk into the ground. I don't know if it was two, if I missed a year and came back, but I remember digging up a whole circle of rocks around the grave. It just sunk for some strange reason. Now, there was on, I believe maybe this one, if that's the far side, one of these graves with rocks used to have for, I don't know, 30 years, my first 30 years or so, one of these graveyard cleans, a little angel, a little ceramic angel that at some point disappeared. Okay, next one. Um, this is looking behind the one we just looked at, and this is some more unmarked graves. But actually, the grandmother—it just says it says uh, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, etc. So, so. These got this let's over there. Let's go to the next. There's one coming. On. Okay, that's the grandfather William. Yeah, there's several like this grandfather. Okay, the next one. That's William Pinkney Warren. I don't know where that name came from. Uh, grandmother Elizabeth. She was known as, uh, I mean, this is Elizabeth Keith Warren. I think, I think she was married to a Keith. I've got to find that out. I think he might have moved to Wilmington. 
But before that, but Elizabeth, Darby, Barbara, Fairley, Caroline, and Jane, those are all straight names. But then you get the Keith, which I think was a married name, and then Warren. Okay, the next one. Those are side by side. Uh, and this is uh, Israel, uh, the father, called in, in the graveyard. It's called the father of Israel. I can't remember. I just remember my mother. My mother has few memories. I mean, he, he, he was, uh, she was seven. She remembers him uh, singing to her. She remembers him taking her, walking with her on his shoulder, on, on, uh, on his shoulder. And uh, uh, he's also remembered this way by my Uncle Bob, Robert, who's, who's there's a memorial to him. I went, I, Uncle Bob was my favorite uncle. Uh, he was my mother's older brother, one of them. He was born in 1890s. I believe, and so he died in the 80s, and so uh, as I was coming up, he was the, the one male storyteller in the family. In my family, mostly the men, when telling stories, perhaps on the front porch in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, the story would go something like this. I mean, the, the talk would go like this. <laughs> not religion, but usually family stories are sto stories about people, relationships, and stuff that's going on in the community. And that's the delightful thing about the gift of, uh, that I received and so many of you received that has to do with talking to each other in relationships about what's going on. And, and uh, so, uh, but, okay, so, but he must have been, so Uncle Bob told me about one day his daddy, Israel, Izzy, Said, uh, did I see you smoking a cigarette the other day? Uncle Bob said, sir. He said, You sure right now, right down there close to the barn, when you walk right by the, by the corn crib there, you weren't, you, weren't, you weren't smoking a cigarette? No, sir. He said, Well, you were smoking because I saw you. And you're going to get what's coming to you. But I ain't saying when. <laughs> <laughs> And he said it was one of the most miserable two weeks of his life. <laughs> 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 we got a snake. Now, back to, uh, back to Henrietta, his mother. He also told me this. He said, uh, and he was the exception to the way, to the rule, I've been telling you about the men in my family. He would, he would get out on my level, he would kneel down, he would look me in the eye, he would listen to me. And he would talk to me and he'd tell me these stories. I got a lot of them from him, but I got a lot of them from my mother and my aunts talking to each other. Um, just kind of sitting and listening. But my grandmother, Henrietta, one day, well, let me back up. One day, Uncle Bob was told to, to row out a row of peas. There were, there were fruit trees, apple trees, beehives, all stuff at their own place. I've heard about Uncle Alfred could wear some nice green. Okay, he's supposed to do this. supposed to do the... Uh, Oh, out the road, but somebody came on and said, We're going to play a base game of baseball. Mm -hmm. So, where Uncle Bob left and didn't come back, didn't finish. And when he got back, his mother said, Take your shirt off and raise your hands. And he raised both his hands. And when he told me that story, he said, and Here's the scar that I got left. So, it was harsh. Uh, that, that was, that was, there's a tinge of seriousness about that. Um, but, so, also, I think I can freely say this in a way that that's not um, bad. In the twenties, um, these people were far away from doctors. Uh, in the teens, I hear stories about this. Go to. They'd come in to carry occasionally, but the big trips were to Raleigh, and it was nine miles, and it was in a wagon. It was a it was a, it was a horse and it was a buggy a wagon and a buggy, and uh, actually one of them was, was going to tell you I'm going to tell you I'll tell you another one's better. Uh, <laughs> so that wagon trip, uh, two two cougars going to hit. So back then people nursed for a long time. 
not people, but women. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there were some men nursing, but that one not help for me. Uh, so, um, a woman was nursing. I think she was in the family. I can't remember who it was. She was sitting in a chair, and a little boy walked up, and he wanted to nurse. And she said to him, she said, if you just stop nursing, I'll let you start smoking. <laughs> She was. She remembers coming back from Raleigh in a wagon. It would be it would be a mule, a horse, and a wagon, and the family would be in there. They would go all the way, to take a to, 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 to nine miles, and then nine miles back. And, and someone, had, a, a gentleman from the community, had picked up a, a bummed a ride. He, he was in the wagon, and my aunt Oma wanted to nurse, and she remembers saying to her mother. For gracious sakes, Mama, give me some titty. <laughs> she remembers saying it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> let's go to the next one. Uh, actually, what I just showed you was, uh, I don't know who I just showed you. This is the mother. This is Henry. This is who I've been talking about. Let's go to the next one. Oh, well, I was just on the father, Israel. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Luther. This is little Luther. Uh, I mean Luther, and then little Luther and Leo Long. Luther's the one who died after his father died and left the wife and the child whom mm -hmm. they raised. Okay, next one. Daughter, uh, that's uh, Anna, who lived about a year. Next one. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is one. Nope. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here we go. Uh, now, here we get to the, to the Haley's. Now, the name is spelled by some still like this. Is that right? A or the I was added. When was how is that? that that's the correct one. This is correct. <laughs> and this is the one you use. Yes. Yeah. So we have some Haley's that are spelled the correct way, and some Haley's that are not here tonight. <laughs> So, and your dad was Walter Clarence. Right. So this is where the, this is one place the Warrens and the Hayes came together, <laughs> and, and why the graveyard. And most people start up using the same graveyard. Now the story about the graveyard getting started is this: it was, it was just a field out behind the house, and there was a there was a field hand from out of this area named Stanley. So I know his last name was Stanley, and Stanley died out in a field one day, and they didn't know what to do. With it. So they said, this is very bad at <laughs> So they buried him back there. Now, I've heard my mother talk about how back then, they would, when somebody died, they would wash the body, undress the body, wash it, lay the body out, and sit up with it all night. That's, that's the way. And then it would be buried soon. Uh, you didn't have far to go, out behind the house. <laughs> so after, after, that, after Stanley, the field hand was buried there, uh, I think a baby uh, died early, or a baby was born, was was birthed next, uh, was buried next, and then um, uh, other people, so a cousin was buried, and then it just grew and became yeah. a family graveyard. Okay, so that's um, 1862. Uh, yeah. Stanley had a marker. I'm sorry. Did Stanley had a marker. Stanley had no marker, and my aunt, but I ain't my aunt, I don't know where it was. Yeah. I think it was more. Next one. Uh, that's 1858. I'm not sure who that is. 
the next one? Uh, okay. Oh, now we'll get some fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now we can talk about Nora. George. Okay. This is not my alcohol. And Nora George. And I'll tell the story. <coughs> John. Is it John Joe. 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 Joe, right. I've heard your name so many times. And Joe, uh, uh, I, I had a play made out of this novel. And I took the actors out to let them know who they were playing, who was based on. And one moment was based on Nora George. And Uncle Alfred, uh, who more stories were told about Uncle Alfred than anybody I've talked about so far. Uncle, Uncle, everybody told stories about Uncle Alfred. But his I, last name was Warren, though. I'm sorry? His last name was Warren? Uh, Alfred, Alfred Warren, yes. Yeah. And he was uh, Izzy's brother. Okay. And he had, he, he, he had about uh, 10 children, which I think about a minute. But he married Nora George. And he called her Mud. <laughs> Mud. And he'd be out in the field. He lived here after his daddy, uh, um, William Pingy, went away. Alfred, I mean, Izzy lived somewhere else. He lived in the Pace Place. Israel lived at the Pace Place. Speaking of the Pace Place, Israel, my mother's father, and their family were sharecroppers for the Pages. Uh, kept a fourth of what they, what, they, what they raised. But there's a woman. Nora George was an actress who was going to play Nora George. And so we're standing right here at this grave, right, right back here. And I'm talking to her about Nora, Nora George a little bit. I'm sitting the house was over there. And up walks out of the woods. Joe <laughs> And do you remember what you told me about Nora George in the back door? Well, when I was a little fella, I would go. Uh, the school bus would let me off in front of their house and, uh, and uh, I'd go in the house and she'd give me a great big terrific biscuit with butter. <laughs> <laughs> butter in and a glass of uh, buttermilk she got out of the chest or something. And uh, I looked forward to that treat, getting home from school so I'd be hungry and I'd kids on the day. I look forward to that tree. I, I would always get off at the foot of a hill and go down to where I live. But I learned it was better talking to the bus driver let me off in front of her house. <laughs> 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 side of the road that you saw at the very beginning, coming up the hill, and halfway down the hill uh, was uh, uh, Aunt Sarah's house. I'll tell you about Aunt Sarah in two minutes. But back to Nora. Can you imagine having uh, some actors with you and talking to an actor about, some, uh, actor about someone that she's, who died in 1935, blah, 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 and someone comes walking out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and tells that very story you just heard. It was, I, I said, yeah, I planned that. <laughs> I, said, I was blown away. So, but Nora and Alfred had 10 children. And Uncle Alfred, uh, the first thing I remember hearing about Uncle Alfred was he spoke with a lift. He spoke with a lift. And he was telling me, Uncle Bob, my mother was talk, talking with a lift and saying, Uncle Alfred talked with a lift. And, and there's some strange stories uh, about Uncle Alfred. Uh, when I say strange, I'll tell you this one. Uh, I'm embarrassed to tell you, but Uncle Alfred, <laughs> did you know Peter King, by the way, ever hear of Peter King? I've heard the name, so. Peter King. Well, Peter King and Uncle Alfred had it out at some point, and they, they, they were down, as the story I heard of was they were down by Sycamore Creek into the Red Eye, which means they were into whiskey, and they blah, 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 and they so and so, and Peter King, and, uh, and Alfred, blah, 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 and somewhere they were where Uncle Alfred had a, a fire poker. They said, he threw it at Peter King, and he said he used to tell about it. He said he missed him, and he said he used to, this is not like funny, but it's, I heard it over and over. He said he he missed him with that fire poke, and that fire poke just walked. <laughs> <laughs> that fire poke just walked on by and missed him. I, I had a quite got fire poke just walked. But Uncle Alfred had all those children, and one of the stories I heard about Uncle Alfred was that the preacher came by one time, and they weren't very church going. I, I, the more I hear about it, the mother was very religious, but. The, I don't, I, there was some problems with the church, I'm not sure what else. Oh, what's going to take Peter King? So the story was, <laughs> every porch 
had a bucket, had a shelf for the water bucket. You go get the water, then the water bucket. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out for poop in the water bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. My daughter just heard that for the first time. It's so bad. Why would you tell that? Why would you tell that? <laughs> Gary, I'm forever sorry. No problem, sir. I've heard a lot of stories, too. There's no doubt. You probably don't want to have that to say. <laughs> I haven't had all those children. And, they, and the preacher came by and uh, was sitting there, and it was time to say the blessing. And Uncle Alfred just looked at one of the children and said, Say Gase, boy. <laughs> say Grace, boy. That's what he said to him. He said, Say Grace, boy. Or say Gase, boy. And the little boy said, Gase? <laughs> no concept of the idea of what that's it. So that's the story. And then there are. So Uncle Alfred um, became um, a character in, uh, in the first story I ever wrote. Uh, it was a salt spot in the kitchen floor where I live, and I imagine somebody falling down to the floor, and I imagine somebody in the family coming in to see what had happened. It was an open well beneath the floor in the fictional account. And sure enough, when they came rushing in, in my mind, there was Uncle Alfred at, at the beginning. And my Uncle Bob, that I told you about, he would talk to me. He used to talk about Uncle Alfred this way. He would tell me he would become Uncle Alfred. <laughs> and it would be in the morning in Ocala, Florida, where he lived, before we went fishing or hunting, it would just be the two of us. I'd be sitting at the breakfast table, and he'd be fixing eggs and bacon for us to eat. And I'd be sitting there full of Uncle Bob, because he's talking to me as if I'm an adult. And he talked, he didn't, there was no child, you know, little boy stuff. He could talk to me. There's some, some of the words that I heard for the first time. <laughs> I can remember, I can quote that, but we won't do that here now. So he's, uh, He's over there and he's pretending he's Uncle Alfred cooking breakfast with all those kids. And he's, he's, he's going, I wish I was an apple hanging on a tree every time I did it. Come here, son, take your food and third. Come here, son, take your food and third. Come here, you little thumb bitch, and take your food and third. And uh, my cousin, um, I can't remember her name, uh, married, one of Alfred's children married Dan. So you got all these, you know, people married each other, of course. Of course right. But so I could go on and on, but I'm like, let's we'll see the next one. Yeah, no. <coughs> Ooh, gosh, oh, this is, this is, I believe this is Roms. Is this Roms? No, he's got a cross. He's got a cross in front of him. I'm not sure. This is Wiley. Oh, this is Wiley. This is. This is wild. There is a Wiley who that wouldn't be. There's. It's it's in that same brick enclosure with one pulley. Okay, it's, so it's one of the uh, yeah the little brick enclosures. Thank you. That's a warren. I'm not sure that I should know. So let's go to the next one. So we got we got to move. Can I see the next one? Uh, yes, okay, this is one of them. This right here, this has been here at least 70 years. And you can't read what's on here right now. But right here is written, carved into this soft stone, born, B O R N, D E D, dead. And uh, forever, I would be so. That's what I would go look at. Just it was so, it was so amazing. The fact that it written in there that way as a kid, and and, and the angel, were the two things that were the two artifacts that always drew me when we were in the graveyard, the born dead and the angel. Okay, the next one. Oh, that's a close up of it. I didn't quite see it. I did. I think I think that may have been a Haley. Uh, for some reason, because I think there's an H. I think there's an L H there. Okay, the next one. I think we're about to. 
Uh, this is a, a stone that was missed, been missing forever. I can't remember whose it is or, or what. Right there. Next one. When we come in the spring, we clear out and uh, cut grass. And uh, this is from the back of the graveyard. And um, uh, let's have the next one. Uh, Luther Dampier, yes. Luther uh, married, he was a Dampier who married one of uh, uh, Alfred's children, uh, who's probably over here. Let's see the next one. Lucy and oh toes yes this is another Haley uh, Haley Warren marriage um, there was a toad and a Tad Warren who were children of the brother of Israel and they had children but uh, Toad married Lucy Haley Warren do you know, you know Lucy Haley do you know where, which one she was she was one of one of the one of the Haley's okay next one. Uh, yeah, there's Toad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, let's, this is an interesting story. Keep going. Uh, either Toad or Tad had a son named Robert Warren, who was in Wilmington when I moved down there in 2002. I'd never seen them, I knew about them, I knew any of them. And I went over to visit him, and I shook his hand, and he was to his toad son or Tad's son. His name was Robert. And his granddaughter walked in and said, oh, you're in the Warrens? I said, yeah. She said, uh, Elizabeth Darby, Barbara, Fairley, <laughs> And her side of the family had memorized that name as if it were a poem. And that, was a, that was an amazing experience to, to hear somebody say that. Okay, the next one. While we're going through these last ones, uh, let's just keep it rolling. I want to see if Eddie's got something. Are any of you people here who are connected to the park or the graveyard got something to add? Joe, you might have something to add. Joe's going to take a program. You need a program. A full program. <laughs> and Joe, you can read about Joe in, in, in Stories in Stone. But Eddie, uh, Pat, Catherine, Sharon, uh, Gary, Joy. Oh, this is it. This is uh, Ron. This is the last one. Uh, Ron, can you tell me, Ron rode a motorcycle, didn't he? Why the, why the bit? He you wrecked it when you rode it. You see in Vietnam? Uh, uh, yeah, offshore Vietnam. Yeah. Navy. Yeah. Just yeah. Navy. Yeah. Yeah. He always wanted to, yeah. I remember, just, he always talked about being very dead. Next one. Uh, and that, that stump, that cross is in front of his grave. I'm not sure if it's still there. Next one. Okay, let me be sure anybody's got any stories or any, I mean, any additions. I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, any questions? Because I'm out of time in five minutes. <coughs> the, the top of the hill I've heard referred to as Aunt Sarah's Hill. Right, I'm so glad you asked that. Aunt Sarah's Hill. So you come up to the graveyard from down here. My Uncle Bob, when he was driving a T model or A model Ford, he would come, he would, if you, if you went straight up and you almost out of gas, the gas was gravity fed. fed. So he'd come up and come up backwards. <laughs> and the gas would be going to the engine. <laughs> and my daughter Catherine, if you want to tell it, has got a great story about falling on a bicycle. I don't think it's as great as. She fell on a bicycle. Ain't no way the conversation ain't on or whatever. I don't even remember. I mean, she gave me both of them. Yeah. And I remember the breath getting up that way. Yeah. Uh, so the, the hill is, as members, not kind of way, but one of the ways as members was halfway down. Aunt Sarah lived. Now, Aunt Sarah was a meddling. Did you know anything about Aunt Sarah? There was always a lot of questions about Aunt Sarah. The mother and, the, and her sisters were crazy about Aunt Sarah because they'd go down and she had these apron pockets. She had this big apron. She'd bring in uh, firewood in, and she always smelled kind of bad. <laughs> they remembered that, but she always had, she loved, she'd hold a pocket, and they reached down to get candy. And she had a dog named Sailor. I think it was a black lab kind of big dog, and and she would say, and she and, and this is true, I'm sure. I mean, if you tell me, I understand the smell now. She, it was two doors, one on each side of the house. It was a one room cabin, and chickens roosted on her bed. <laughs> <laughs> you all immediately go to the bad part, rather than the good part. Little chicken. <laughs> anyway, she would say to Sailor, she'd say, Sailor, get out of here. And Sailor would go under the table, 
And she'd say, well, get on the table then. <laughs> Church will be on the left. The Kings in the, in the cemetery, where a lot of these people are buried. Then on the right will be uh, uh, Rayland, the uh, King Cemetery. And but you get a dead end, right? Go to the dead end and take a right. Yeah, you but if you're walking, yeah. you can just take a right and you come right up to this to this graveyard. Right. We go to Umstead a lot, but we walk that way. Okay, if you come in by the visitor center, if you come in by the visitor center. You go by the business center, take the first left, and then take a right and follow that road way back around until you, you can't get in there unless you walk in. I'll kind of take you in. So you get to those the two camps, and there's a little road to the right. You can go, and you'll end up on this road. They'll, you t ask them where the old Warren uh, Cemetery is. Yes. When did all the houses disappear? Oh, the houses disappeared in 1930 after 37. In 1936, the, the federal government bought this property because. Because there was a bunch of poor people on it, and they couldn't get make any money off the crops, and so I haven't quite figured this out yet. But they bought the land from them and, and, and sold it to the state. If the state would make it a recreational area, five thousand acres, so it did. And and gradually the houses and everything were torn down, and that's why the book's called Stories and Stone, because you can find stones in there that were foundations. You can find great piles of stones where people move the stones, and that's where they buried treasure. Supposedly, my uncle Bob remembers. Uh, uh, seeing his father uh, counting money that came from a rock pile to take to the bank for the first time ever. Also, you know, I can tell you a little bit, of, I, I can't tell you a lot about, uh, the, the, I mean, I can, there was a, an African American named Andrew Shaw. And I want to find some Shaw. He was a preacher. Y'all knew about Andrew Shaw. He, he's in our 1923 family reunion. Uh, it was in 23 family unions, pictures in the back. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Uh, Andrew Shaw, Uncle Bob talked about Andrew Shaw being an old man, which would have been in the 50s. Yes, sir. And he saw Andrew Shaw, and they both cried because they hadn't seen each other in such a long time. Andrew Shaw was a preacher and a bootlegger, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. there, there were stories about Andrew Shaw, and I forgot where I was going with that. But, uh, oh. Uh, so, um, Very interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Shaw and uh, Barry County. Yeah, Barry County. Oh, oh, yes, thank you. So Andrew Shaw came to Uncle to, to my father Izzy's house, my grandfather's. Uh, this had to be about 19, it was before 1911. And Uncle Bob was probably he remembered he was born. So between 18, between 1900 and 1911, Andrew Shaw, the bootlegger, African American, came to my grandfather's kitchen. And said, Izzy, I need your gun. The revenues are here. Uh -huh. And Uncle Bob saw this happen. He saw my granddaddy get his shotgun uh, and give it to him. It was loaded. He kept the shotgun loaded all the time. Uncle Bob shot a hole through the door, wall with a loaded shotgun under the bed in, in this house. No, that was a page place one time. That's another story. <laughs> but he takes it off and he gives it to Andrew Shaw. He gives him the loaded shotgun and six shells. And Andrew Shaw leaves. And my Uncle Bob hears gunshots. And at midnight or late at night with a lantern, my Uncle Bob came in and Izzy was picking buckshot <laughs> under the scalp of Andrew Shaw. Wow. wow. And he, he told me that. Like he told me all the other story. Now, um, I'm interested in race relations today and yesterday, and so only recently, in the last six months, looking through stories in stone, there, there was a wonderful woman, Elizabeth Woodson, who, uh, <coughs> if you read the story, she, she, well, people visited from the university to, to visit the poor folk and collected, uh, there was a woman named Becky Carpenter or something who had all these folk songs from England, yeah. and, and they collected them and recorded them, you can hear her, and, uh, but uh, she set up, she had a, she had a, a, a theater where they did where they did plays, and you know a lot about this. You keep nodding your head. It's in the book I just read. Oh, it's in the book you read. The book. I'm so glad you read the book. And, but you know, I never. They, they also. Uh, how do you how do you talk about this? I can't. I won't ever. They did blackface stuff at that little that, 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 that. And I'm sure they probably did Shakespeare. The only thing I knew, I never made the connection 
Except my, over and over, I've heard whenever I wouldn't speak loud enough in front of somebody, my mother would say, speak it out, Ide. And finally she explained to me that they were in the back of us and somebody named Little Ida was up in a play and somebody in the middle of the play said, speak it out, Ide. <laughs> and so I heard that all the time. Speak it out, Ide. So, but I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I got to tell the end of the Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, there's a headstone at the corner of Group Camp Road and Sycamore Road, just kind of back off in the corner there, maybe five feet, six feet. It is kind of broken. I've been trying to read it. Do you and know that one, Joe? Yeah, it's in the book. It is? Okay, I'll get the book. I've been so it's curious just, about that. Right in the it's just there. one headstone. It's forget, kind of sinking and broken. And I'm trying, I think it's a female, and it looks like she was young from what I can make yeah. out from the... So that would be in the book? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, think I, I think you got it most of the book. Oh, yeah. I must say, I'm so, so indebted to Tom Weber, who wrote that book. He was obsessed with that park. He was from outside the state, and for 15 years he walked that park, and then for and during those 15 years or more, he talked to, he talked to my mother, he talked to my aunts, he talked to everybody. Uh, and, and he was obsessed with it, and he wrote a beautiful, Book. Now it makes a difference if you're in a, in a family, of course, but I just think the history and the feel of what, what it was like uh, in, out in the country. Cary was a little city place, and I mean, a little community, and it was out in the country. Right where the runways cross now, uh, Raleigh Durham, where the airport is, where the runway is, was, was a little hub with a couple of stores. There was an Adams store, there was a Saunders store, and there may have been a school uh, right there. There was a, in the community, there was a Moravian church. It was pronounced Marvin. These people were not, my mother went to the sixth grade and she wanted to go to work. And she went to work when she was 12. She had to stop child labor laws. There was not a lot of uh, education and there was, there was creativity in the way words were spoken. There was a cousin named Melly who couldn't, didn't, didn't use the word miracle. The word she used was mackerel, and she would say it was just a mackerel that he could even get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she had some more, some more, some more words like that. Oh, one of the other things that somebody in the family said, my mother would always tell me, like if I was a little bit hesitant, hesitant to do something, she would say, she would say what somebody in the community said who wasn't quite, quite clear on the name Columbus, and she would say. Uh, do you remember that? Uh, give it, give it a try, Paul. It was a take a chance, Columbia. Yes, did. yes, that's it. <laughs> take a chance, Columbia did. <laughs> <laughs> Dora Welty tells the story of a woman, uh, Dora Welty, the writer, uh, who took incredible photographs in 1935. You see me see the photographs. She told a story about a man she knew his last name was Floyd, but his name was Elder Brother, come to tell you all your friends are dead and gone with Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> I Somebody sit on the porch, and somebody came up, came up with birth, the baby was being birthed, because the men weren't in there. They were out on the porch. The elder brother come and tell you all your friends are dead and gone. And he went and said, we got a <laughs> <laughs> She had another one. I wish I could remember. It. Well, I think it was customary. I think it was not. I think it was customary. I'm, oh, well, what time? Any other questions? I have one quick one. Yes. Um, with regards to that, Mr. Shaw, yes. do you know how he entered the park and the reason I asked is, is I always been a big fan of the story in our family that our great-great-great-grandfather, Al King, um, apparently his family, Mr. Shaw's family, helped him and um, Mr. Shaw's parents were killed in a buggy accident. Mm -hmm. And so he was left orphaned and that my, <coughs> our great-great-grandfather raised him. Really? That's what that's, I, we were I guess told. that's the reason he's in the, the family. Photo. <laughs> 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 
And we also learned about that family reunion photo that an African American a photographer by the last name of Campbell did the photography. And I learned that through the archives in um, downtown. Oh, that's fascinating. Which is highly unusual for that time period for an African American to photograph a Caucasian family. I'll say. That, that is a, that's, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I was working on this book, I spent a lot of time in the archives. And you can go to the archives. Uh, in, in, in Raleigh and find out. This can be amazing, but it, it needs to be your family problem. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you all so much. Yes. Oh, I did have uh, that grave at the corner of Group Camp Road is uh, Elizabeth Todd. Yeah. And the stone says, here underneath this wall lies the body of Elizabeth Todd, daughter of John Cope, wife of Solomon Todd, born February 1819, died November 2nd, 1847. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Henrietta, the one who wouldn't cut cloth, yep. she was a coat before she was married to one. Yeah. Oh, so that's connection that is. So thank you all so much for coming. that we are 150 years old this year. And um, we had a little problem with a hurricane earlier in September, and we had a big program planned called Bygone Days that we were going to do. But uh, we, we ended up having a different kind of history that day. Um, so we've decided that we are going to incorporate as much of that into our big holiday open house on December 1st as possible. So. I invite you all to come back. We're going to have carriage rides and hot cider and homemade cookies. Where's my cookie? Lady? Um, and um, uh, crafts and all kinds of things. Uh, but a wonderful celebration to end up our 150th year. But again, thank you so much. What an honor to be here. Diamonds will be shining no longer. 